Salam everyone, um, my name is Ihsan and today I'll be talking about the pati patience which is also known as sabr in Arabic and how it relates to my life, your life and the Quran. So the three verses I chose were from Surah Al-Baqarah verses 151, 152 and 153. Uh, it's 152, 153, and 154. So the first verse says, Remember me and I will remember you and thank and thank me and never be ungrateful. 153 is, O believers, seek comfort and patience in prayer. Allah is truly with those who are patient. And the third surah is, uh, this, the third verse is, Never say that those martyred in the cause of Allah are dead. In fact, they are alive, but you do not perceive it. So what I decided to do this week is input what I believe they mean in my life. So reading these helps me define three types of patience. The first type of patience is patience with self. Sorry, I'm like really nervous. Tell the lie. What's the biggest lie for you? Public, in public humiliation. It's <laughs> my biggest one. So the first with being patience of self is to be true to yourself, staying consistent with your prayers, goals, and help your loved ones, which creates patience. I say this because people who are angry or easily triggered um, have have a hard time keeping up with prayers or even, you know, driving down the road, you get angry at someone, he honks at you, you start swearing, and you easily um, get angry. I also said remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eases your struggles and lets help things go your way if you're patient. And um, another form of uh, patience with self is usually, I, I believe it's the most neglected one out of my three. Because, um, for example, if you're trying to go on a diet and, you know, two weeks in, you're not patient with yourself, you don't see, you know, the six pack you want or your belly down or whatever you're going for, usually you give up. And the second is uh, patience with others. So I wrote, don't get angry at everything. Give them excuse. Give them one excuse. Like Brother Hussain said, if you get mad at somebody and you don't know what their reason is 100 percent and they tell you, oh, um, I'm on the way to the hospital, you know, you would remember for the rest of your life, be like, oh, I got really mad and I wasn't really supposed to. Um, where people, where most people have patience issues is not waiting a second before they blurt, they blurt out anything on their mind. So an example of this would be um, if a restaurant worker messes up your order and they gave you chicken instead of meat, you know, you get really angry and it's really not that big of a deal when people in Gaza don't even have the food to eat. So um, uh, there's a quote by Imam Ali that relates to this. He says, speak so that you may be known since man is, since man is hidden under his tongue. This to me means you have two types of people. The one who bites their tongue and holds in their anger, anger and shows patience. And then those who can't control their words, which is, from my experience, mostly guys. And we give them excuse saying, oh, you know, guys just get angry. They do this, they do that. But in reality, it's... They should have as equal patience as women have. And the third is patience with trust in Allah. This doesn't get talked about much because if you ask anyone, they would say, yeah, I have patience. I have trust with Allah. But if one thing goes doesn't go their way, they tend to forget Allah and just continue their bad habits. Um, so I also wanted to talk about verse 153. That meant the most to me. So it says those who are martyred in the cause of Allah are dead. In fact, they are alive. So in my life, I kind of related it to losing my mom three years ago to cancer. I just felt lost and empty. But this helped me in trusting Allah. At first, a lot of people only see the bad in the situation. But my mom was in pain for like, a year, a year and a half, when we figured out she got the cancer and started chemo. But alhamdulillah, she, she passed away um, peacefully, somewhat peacefully. But the pain Allah made her go through helps her in the afterlife. Allah says in the verse, 
I mentioned, don't speak as if they are dead, which truly, which is very true because she lives through me and my siblings. Salawat. And can we get a Fatiha when you guys are done? Thank you. All praise be to Allah, the Lord of the world. May his peace and blessings be on our beloved Prophet and his Amakat Ahl Bayt. Salawat. I've known Hussein for and his family. They were, when we started wise, it was his mom that I met first. And all his mom cared about was the family. She was one of the first members for the after school program, correct Hussein? You were the, one of the first ones to come to our program and it was her mom. She would always drop them off at the youth groups, programs. And her mom, his mom was a gem. So it just hit me. You know, it's those types of parents that I love. The ones that are so concerned with their kids, not the parents when, you, when I call them and there's bad news about their son or daughter, that they curse the world, they curse their wives, they curse everybody, they even spit in people's faces, and they think, and then they look at me and say, forget God, forget faith, did you see what my daughter did, my daughter? And I'm tired of those types of parents. And I pray to Allah, Allah remove all those parents from this school that dare say, I don't need faith or God when it comes, I don't want to hear about religion. And that's what Hussein was talking about. How do you lose faith? You lost patience. What will destroy you is anger. So when he sent me those verses today, I was going to start a new lesson. I said, I'm going to go over those verses. And we finished starting with Why by Simon Sinek. So we're going to start a new book. I'll show it at the end. It's called The Myth of Normal by Dr. Gabor Mate. And then we'll continue with Quran and 40 Hadiths and so on. So thank you, Hussein, especially for bringing your mom. And inshallah, Whatever good that you do will be in her name. And that's what eases her grief. Because like you said, she's not die. She's not dead. She's alive. There's no soul that dies. And your soul is not within your body. I'm going to say it again. Your soul, which is immaterial, and your barzakh bar body doesn't have matter to it, it's not in your body. Because how could something immaterial be in something that's material? You're an immaterial being within, a mater within this material world that's leaving soon. So that body that you'll be giving in the next world is only dependent on your deeds. And we're going to talk about that today. How do you make sure you prepare for that day? That when somebody comes up, your son, your daughter, they come up with pride saying, I had a good mom. I had a good father. For chance, imagine they come up here and they don't even mention you one day. You talk about a curse of God, and we have parents like that in this community. They hate their parents. And I'm going to be very honest with you, especially with what I've been dealing this week. I don't blame them. For if I had a mom or a father that treated me in certain ways, there's no way I would be here. That's why one of the biggest curses you could do is hurt your loved ones out of anger because you think you hold power. Because you think you have money in your pocket. So you guys could kind of guess what kind of week I've had this week. Salawat. Oh. On a brighter note, we had a retreat this weekend. And we this is our Sister Huda, what number? Our fifth retreat. And this was our best one. It was very spiritual. It was basic foundation of Tawheed. And when you get a group of people in one hotel room where they don't care about their phone, their jobs, nothing. Like one father says, I want my son to come. Is there a beach? No. Is he going to go swimming? No. Um, what are the activities? Uh, no activities. But what's he going to be doing? Well, half the time his eyes are going to be closed. Well, what's he, where is he going to be? Well, he's going to be in a room for three days. And he's going to love it. Why? Because you disconnect from this world, this body, and you reconnect with your true self. 
When you do that for three days with a group of believers, you're going to leave different. Raise your hand if you were there this weekend. I see these people, their hands are raised. Go talk to them about it when they were there. Anybody would like to give a testimony really quick on it? Put you on the spot? Come on, hurry. <laughs> your name and so on. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. I'm Jafar Alamara, and I recently went to the Elevate Retreat. Um, some few takeaways from it. Uh, we went over a lot of things. Uh, we learned how to learn, which was shocking because I realized after 22 years of my life, I didn't know how to learn properly. So that was good. I uh, did a lot of meditations and a couple hypnosis sessions in the morning. Those were amazing. And also reflected a lot about Tawheed. Oh, and what was also amazing is that it was the 15th of Sha'ban on Saturday. So we also got to do the Ahmad with Hajj Hassanan. He was amazing. And yeah, the whole experience was just amazing. One of the best weekends of my life. And wow. yeah, so a lot. So on the 15th of Shaban, I don't believe in forcing anybody, especially when it comes to religious beliefs. But my daughter is 11 years old. So my manager says when they become balik, then it becomes, certain things become wajib. One of them is the headscar. So I said, Allah, I never talk to my daughter. I don't believe in preaching. I'm not a preacher. Whatever I tell you, it's because I practice it and I've applied it in my own life. And the little that I know works with the foundation that you don't need anybody but Allah. But I'm a true believer that if you follow God's way, and what's the hardest part of that is just starting. It's like the rocket ship. It needs a lot of fuel, a lot of energy, correct? To get, but when it gets in space, what happens? The momentum carries it. That's God's system. Anything, think about when you start studying for a quiz or a test. You get going, it's hard. But what happens after a while? You get into flow. That's God's system with, especially when it comes to Sharia, his rules. When you start doing it, it takes a lot of momentum. For some sisters said, okay, it's hard. I'm going to leave the house. I'm going to dress a little bit better. Or I'm not going to use a swear word today. Or I'm, I'm going to lower my gaze. That momentum in the beginning, but eventually when it carries you, Allah shows you a sign you can never go back. But with me, with my kids, I don't force. So my, my other daughter, my daughter, my daughter, on the 15th of Shaban, my wife is like, Allah, I haven't spoken to my daughter about hijab, but let her come to me and say she wants to put it on. And my daughter's maturity was much different than my other daughter. So I knew maturity, she wasn't there yet. But I said, Allah, you decide. Two days ago, she comes up to my wife, said, Ma, I don't know why, but I really know I need to put on the hijab. <laughs> and this is the time. She said, oh my God, this is what I prayed for. Salawat. So that was a pretty cool experience. 15th of Shaban is a gift from Allah. You pray, you write down a letter, and if you haven't done it yet, you could still do it. You write a letter of all your wishes, all the things you need help for. Read that letter a year later and watch what comes true. These are the gifts. You know how we have, you know how people write to a fat white man a letter called Christmas? Well, this is actual real. So I'm going to do some takeaways for those that were at the retreat. I'm going to do some quick review, just some concepts that I think we learned that I think it's important that everybody learns. I'm going to go over some of the ayahs that Brother Hussein followed, and then we'll do some new concepts. Can you guys give me the best, your best for the next 35 minutes? Tell the person next to you, you're going to give it your best. Salawat. Hello. Whenever you're in a lecture, we did, we went through a whole series of how to learn. You always ask the question, why am I listening to this? When will I use it? Why will I use it? How will I use it? Whenever your mind drifts, you come back, say, wait, what am I listening to here? When will I ever apply this? Because learning is not a passive sport. And that's the problem why schools are a failing system. Because you sat in front of a lecture for an hour. Do you know how much you retained after an hour? of listening to a lecture, how much? Take a guess, 20%? First hour, 50%. Do you know how much you forget after 24 hours? 70%. And eventually you forget it all if you're a passive learner. 
You cannot be passive. That's why I always stop you every 50 and I say, share, understand it, learn it. And should you be taking notes every once in a while? Yes. Learning is not a passive sport. Unfortunately, schools have trained you to become very passive. Why? They don't want you to be thinkers. And that's the system across the country. Okay. So Hussein was talking about, just as we sent, oh, we're gonna, yeah, no, this is the verse. Just as we sent amongst you a message from yourselves, relating to our verse of purifying and teaching you the book and wisdom and teaching you that way you should not know. It purifies you. So Allah has given you something that's purified you from all evils, meaning the things that you desire. How would you know what's right or wrong? You got to get it from the Holy Quran, from Ahl Bayt. Because what if you desire something that's bad for you? Because the body doesn't know morality. It's like asking your ear what color the wall is. It has no idea. So you can't allow the body to guide you. What's, what is the body going to say? If he sees a pretty girl, the body is going to say, go. What's to stop you? When, when the body sees an ad saying, gamble here, free $500. Come do one bet. The body says, do it. The body doesn't know morality. And there's 8 billion people in the world. Many billions of people do these things thinking it's okay. Because they say, oh, it's natural. It's not natural. Because it's unnatural to lower your gaze. But just because it's not natural, is it bad? And just because it isn't, is it bad? Body can't teach me morality. Where do I get my morals from? Other than the Quran and Ahl Bayt. Where else are you going to get your morals from? Majority? 51%? Well, what if, who's the 51? Is it just this room? Is it the world? Because we know in history, when we've taken our rules from, from morality from the majority, at one time, majority told Hitler what he did was a good thing. 98% approval rating. They were wrong. Cannibalism. There was one time a group of people said cannibalism was okay. They were wrong. You notice, that's why Allah says we keep sending prophets and books because they take it, they skew it for their own beliefs body and they mistreat people, they use people. And that were the Jews of Medina. The Jews of Medina were, were manipulating people. Sounds pretty similar to what's happening now. That's why it's a sign of our 12th Imam's return very soon, inshallah. And there are a lot of signs out there. Is that when is when your the Imam said the return? One of the signs is when you tell the truth, people hate you. It's a sign. It's happening. When you expose oppression, people hate you. It's now. Doesn't it feel like you're holding hot fire when you're trying to practice the deen? That's a sign. The world thinks you're a threat. Where you're just promoting peace, submission. What's happened to the world so fast that it's changed? That's why we're here to come together saying, don't be fooled. Go get your beliefs. So you, I want you to have a discussion with the person next to you. Where should you get your moralities from, your moral code? Talk to the person next to you. Tell them. Where should you get it from? Okay, we'll have one person share. Where do you get your morals from? How did I know? <laughs> I knew it. And I knew that. Allah for sure, I think. And, and how does Allah give them to you? Through people and signs. I think he, he, well, the Quran, of course, but like the, the people in your life will instill like um, references from the Quran in your life daily. Right. But what does Allah warn us? Be careful of the people with the sweet tongue, but the hard hearts. So even if a Muslim comes up and preaches, even if he's anything, if you know he violates himself, the principles of Islam, you say, okay, that's somebody I don't trust but I don't follow him, but I keep following my religion. What happens is society will look at somebody like Osama bin Laden or somebody and say, he's Muslim, he's bad, therefore all of Islam is bad. Some of you have done that too. Where if somebody's hurt you as a practicing Muslim, 
supposedly, and you've taken that narrative saying, therefore, I don't want anything to do with Islam. So my, what I'm telling you is the Quran is the only book in the world where God is speaking to you, nobody else. It's the closest manifestation we have to our Lord, closer than anything else, the sun, the moon, the prophets, angels. It's the closest. That's why it's the greatest miracle. But it's incumbent on you, especially during Ramadan, to allow it to reach your heart. And that's what we're going to talk about today. All right. So remember me, and I'll remember you. And be grateful to me, and do not deny me. So if you want God to remember you, what should you do? Remember him. Everybody know the law of attraction? Here you go. Whatever you want, whatever you think you get, God meets you where you're at. You don't get what you want. You get who you are. So if you're a negative person, what are you going to attract? Negativity. If you're a positive, positive. Because Allah says, I will respond to you. So if you remember me in a negative way, what am I going to show you? And that is the power Allah has given you. And that's what I love. That you don't need anybody else. But it's all state dependent. Because Allah says, grateful. Can you be grateful in a bad mood at the same time? I'm so thankful. I love you. I appreciate you. Can't you hear it in my voice? You notice you can't be both. You notice? I can't be merciful and angry at the same time. So Allah says, when you're grateful with your words, when your actions, I will give you more. Because so what Allah says, when you're grateful, that means you don't deny me. Who are the ones that deny Allah when you're grateful? And when are you ungrateful is when there's setbacks things don't go your way so then they forget Allah so Allah forgets them is that an, an ayah so again you send out that energy I'm forgetting about you Allah I'm just going to worry about me I'm going to do it my way so Allah says we forget about you and anything that you go and get nothing will make you happy nothing I promise you because it's not me promising you, it's Allah. What's the biggest problem we have in this community? Everybody has their own opinion and how they should do things. So Allah says, why are you asking people for their opinion? Why are you asking your friends? Why are you asking anybody but Allah? What's wrong with you? Allah says, why are you ignoring me? And the, the best example I ever give is when Stephen Curry is in the room and me and you are arguing about three-pointers, how to shoot them. And we just completely ignore Stephen Curry. Everybody would be like, you're a fool. Yes or no? Now you know how the angels look at us. Angels are scratching their heads. They're like, what's wrong with you people? Why are you asking anybody but Allah? So then, special spiritual blessings, the way you remember Allah will determine. So not only does it help you in this world, but the next life, barzakh, which exists right now. So when you remember Allah, your barzakh body also and the people who have passed away. Like every time Hussein remembers Allah, his mom benefits in the grave in Barazakh because she had something to do with his upbringing. And every time he does something bad, guess who gets hurt in the grave? She does. So now Hussein has to become so aware, says, I don't want to hurt my mom. Did you know that? Anybody who has a loved one that they truly love, you do things in their name. But don't hurt them. And by the way, it's not only his mom that will hurt. It's her mom and her mom and her mom. You go Because they all had something to do with Hussein. So why do you do good things? So that way in the future, the benefits, those people will also be good. It will benefit you in the grave. Make sense? I am standing where my servant thinks of me. So wherever you're at, God is going to meet you. So if you're in a state of lack, you're going to attract lack. You don't want to start momentum and be lazy, you're going to stay there. Allah says, the more you come to me, guess who keeps coming to you? Allah. Well, that's the momentum. Islam is all about starting. If you don't pray, start one prayer a day. If you don't read Quran, read two ayahs a day. It's nothing to overload. Start. If you feel like you want to dress a little bit better or stop talking in a negative way or do anything, all I'm telling you is, and I don't care if you do it, just start. Say, oh Allah, I'm not going to tell anybody anything, but I'm going to start. Here's the momentum. Even though the body doesn't feel like it. But as soon as you start, then guess what you get to ask? Allah, I remembered you. 
Now remember me, show me a sign. And when that sign hits you in the face, you will never, ever go back to the old self. That's why I do three-day retreats. That's why we do camps. We get people to say, just keep doing it for a few days. Watch how fast Allah will return. And that's the strongest voices, the testimonies that we have. Somebody says, my marriage was this way or my health was this way. And I have overcome it in a short time. Why? Because I asked Allah. The reason why you don't ask, the main reason, is because you don't believe in it yet. But as soon as you build that relationship with Allah and take a step, that strengthens your belief. Because that's your miracle. The same way the people of Musa had a miracle. The people of Noah had a miracle. The people of Yusuf had a miracle. But the question is, what's your miracle going to be? Where's your Yusuf moment? You're expecting things, big things will come. You go walking, he comes running. Okay, what are the three types of remembering? One, you give remembering by the tongue. Something good happens, subhanAllah. You start to drive, you say bismillah. You finish something, you say alhamdulillah. Can we at least start there? Isn't that the easy part? You portray everything. So the tongue is the easy, and that benefits. The second one, you remember by action. You pray, you do charity for the sake of who? Allah. You don't want anything. You don't want return from people. And then you remember him by his blessings. You're grateful. That's the most important. When things come to you, you thank Allah. When you get your paycheck, you don't remember your boss paying you first. Because who actually paid you? When your parents feed you, who actually fed you? When somebody, you started a relationship, who brought that relationship for you? Allah. And if you keep Allah in the center, then Allah keeps giving you more. Why? Because you're grateful. That's the law of attraction. That's the secret. Go watch it. We have it. So whatever goes around, comes around. Why? To teach you lessons. Isn't that beautiful? So what does that mean? No matter where you're at in life, I don't care if you're a drug addict, I don't care if you've cheated, you've gambled, I don't care if you're a perfidious sinner. Whatever you're at in life, as soon as you turn to Allah, Allah turns to you. And your whole life change. Because your reputation isn't with people. Who cares what people think? Right? Who cares? You're not going to care as soon as you're in the grave. Your reputation, and by the way, whenever you get embarrassed, you know who's the only person that thinks about it after two days? You. Because there's always news, right? But the things that happened three months now ago, nobody thinks about it now. So, so remembering versus not remembering. So if you don't remember God constantly, it's like you're a dead person. That's what the prophet said. It's like he's living, but he's actually dead. And if you notice, who are the scariest people to be around? People who are ungrateful. And who are the people that are not grateful? People who don't remember God. You want to be around a scary, scary individual? Be around somebody who's ungrateful. I do marriage counseling. For, and if I meet with the wife, the first thing I find out, is the person grateful for his wife cooking? cleaning, taking care of the kids. And if I find out he isn't, you know what I do? She begs me to meet him. I say, not in a million years. Because you can't change somebody. And they're ungrateful. And you try to give them advice. Anybody been through that? You try to give somebody advice who's ungrateful? What are they going to do to you? They will destroy you. I run a school. When a parent calls me complaining about something or they're upset about their kid, and I notice they're not grateful. I don't give advice. I just listen to them. Because what happens is that's fuel for the fire. Imagine if you're like that. Talk to the person next to you. How do you react when you do something wrong and somebody gives you advice? Go. Oh, 
Okay. If any of you have an ungrateful friend, meaning you're always there for them, but when it's time for them to reciprocate, they don't. My, don't burn bridges, but just ask Allah to remove them from your life. Because you want to destroy your spirit, be around people who are ungrateful. And that's one of the things as teenagers, right? If you ask the older adults, how many friends you have? You say, I, had, I have a few. But how many did you have as a teenager? I had a lot. Well, what happened? Well, the ones that were ungrateful, I had to part ways. Well, why did you part ways? They hurt me. So if you notice, and what's the biggest tale that they're ungrateful? Who can answer? What's the easiest way to find out if somebody's ungrateful? Yes. Constantly complaining. What's an easier way? They don't believe in Allah. What's even that's 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 the easiest way. But what's another way? When it's always about them, they don't ask about you. But go. I'm going to ask you again. It's always about them, and they don't care about. Who loves them the most, other than Allah? Parents. Some of you are friends with people that are so ungrateful that they'll treat you so good, but as soon as their mom picks up the phone, what do you want? You're bugging me. Or they'll tell you secrets that they wouldn't tell their parents. The one who changed their I was about to say a bad word. <laughs> they changed their diaper. Imagine every day you change somebody's crap. Every day. And you feed them every day. Every day for three years. And every day you gave them money. Every day. And then one day they're mean to you. How would that make you feel? Good or bad? Horrible. He said, every day I changed. I did everything for you. Now you're mean to me? Who's the most wretched person is that character. And what happens within public schools, especially, they've allowed that behavior. They allow people to do drugs, allow people to date, do all these things, and they say, it's okay, don't tell your parents. Really? Why? Well, they'll judge me. Yeah, they should. You're the idiot. You need guidance. When you lack wisdom, intelligence... Our scholar says, you're a stupid individual. You shouldn't guide yourself. And here's the proof. So I told you, I'm, the last, this week has been weird. Meeting some people, keep crying, their kids lost to sin. Let's say you went to your mom. Anybody who disputes and you think you know better than your parents and hiding secrets, really? And you go to your friends and not your mom, destroy this behavior. Because even if your mom gives you bad advice, Allah will still bring you barakah and show it to be good. That's the power of your mother. Don't ever betray that trust. You have the curse of God. I run away from people who are bad to their moms because you're going to get a curse. You don't want to be around that storm. Run. So imagine your mom comes to you. You come to your mom and you're in first grade. Ma, I don't like school. I don't want to go. And let's say, because you say you all say, oh, I want my mom to listen to me. I wish you would understand me. You don't even understand yourself. It's the body controlling the mind. But let's say your mom did listen to you at first grade. Let's, let's, let's analyze this. And you didn't go to school because that's what you wanted. That's what the body wanted. When you're 18, you will shake your mom and say, I'm ignorant now. I'm illiterate. Why did you listen to me? I got nothing. Why did you listen to me? You agree? And the same token, the age you're at now, I'm giving you advice. That way on the day of judgment, you don't shake me and say, why didn't you warn me of this day? Why did you didn't tell me? It's the same exact thing within Islam. You may not like it because the body is addicted to something. And I understand that's why you take baby steps in Islam. But we're doing it to protect you, not because of heaven or hell, because it's your salvation to peace. Why you run away and hide things from people that love you, that want the akhirah for you? Don't do that. 
And it's happening way too much. Forts and Crestwood with Dearborn High. Majority are doing it. Yes or no? Do we have any high school students here? Am I wrong? At all. Now it's come to a point when you drive around the community where the parents have submitted so much and worshipped their kids, said, okay, we accept you. Go to prom. We're going to take the pictures. How? Do you realize where that could go? And I'm confused. That's why I promise you, I'll never share anything that's not within the prescriptions of Islam, but it's not because I'm speaking down to you because we love you so much. We want to protect you in this world and the next. And I've realized there's less and less institutions that care about you that way. That's why we're doing this. And inshallah, Allah accepts. But at least somebody warned you. That way on the day of judgment, can't say somebody didn't tell you. So this was... This, there's a few hadith about when you go to Allah, Allah comes back to you. And there's hundreds of those types of it, but I want to skip. And all you believe, seek help through patience and prayer. And indeed, Allah is with the patient seeking help. You cannot do it alone. Islam is not meant for you to be alone. Don't even basketball players have coaches. Did even Michael Jordan have a coach? Doesn't even Stephen Curry have a coach every day helping him? Islam is not a religion where you do things on your own. That's why you find a scholar. I, my scholars are Sheikh Shomali, Sheikh Bahmanpur, Khomeini, Mutahari. These are my teachers. And even therapists. If your therapist doesn't have a therapist, it's usually a red line. Everybody needs a guide. But you have the best of guide in the Holy Quran. That's your guide. You don't need anybody, anything other than that and people who could represent it. So what is patience? Who could give me a quick definition? Then you say, okay, be patient. Don't go with those friends. But what is patience? Who can give me a quick? What do you think patience is? Go ahead. Wait for a better outcome. Okay. Someone who holds himself in the face of difficulty. Just because things didn't go your way or your mom told you no or your husband said no or something isn't the way you're supposed to be and you're upset about it. You have two options. You be patient or you act out on your anger. You can get angry, but you act out on it. Are you patient? And Allah says when you're patient, he gives you what? More. That's your trials in life. I was driving. I don't usually go to down. I work downtown, but on Wednesdays, I get to work remote. My boss called me because usually I always try to prepare for discussions like a day or weekend. I never can. Even the retreats, I prepare the day of. I can never do it because something about the spirit of the day, I said, okay, this is what I need to speak about. So he calls me and he says, you need to come downtown. There's no nobody else showing up. I do IT work. I said, okay. But then I called and said, oh, God, I wanted to prepare. What am I going to have? And I started complaining. And I get in my car and I'm complaining some more. And I, I, I didn't catch myself. And I'm like, I just got it. You know when you get in that spiral and everything is a complaint? Why is it so windy? 70 degrees yesterday, 20 degrees. I was just and, I was, and then a person was driving erratically. You notice, whatever you look for, you will see. Right? Just like if I told you, look for everything in this room that's brown. Look, 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 look. You got it? Now close your eyes. Close your eyes. Really quick. Two seconds. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. All right. Now tell me everything that is red. <laughs> you notice a lot of you didn't see red because you weren't what? Looking for it. So Allah says, whatever you look for, I'm going to show you. That's God's system. So if you look for positive. So I was in a negative spiral. Then I, I parked and I said, okay, I... Because I knew I have to, I had to come back to Wise, so I get free parking. But then I paid. Usually I park on the other side, but I parked on this side, and I had to pay twenty dollars so I could leave for Wise to make it in time for prayer. Because Hajj Hassan couldn't be for prayer today, so I complained about that. This was my day today. I'm about to cry. <laughs> 
I get to work and I'm flying. I'm trying to do as much as I can. And I still didn't prepare yet. When finally I get to leave. So usually I leave on the other exit, but because I park there, now you never park there because that's $20 every time I park, so I get free parking. But that one, it's close, so I don't have to walk far, and I wanted to leave fast. So I get in my car and go. But I had to cross the street. So there was this, a lady who was walking a little bit in front of me. The light turned was red. The crosswalk was blinking, and then uh, halfway through the crosswalk, we get halfway, the light turns green. So there's a car, a semi-truck, and then a third lane. The lady had headphones on. So she's walking, and she notices those two cars stopped. So she keeps going, but what she doesn't see is that there's this other huge truck coming. I run, and I grab her. 100% she would have got hit. She turns around. She says, oh, my God, you're my angel. Just save me from getting hit by a car. Then she goes, and I get in my car, and I got in my car, and I cried. I said, in the morning, I was complaining to you, Allah, the whole day. If I would have known that I would have helped that lady getting hit by the car, stopped it, would I have complained in the morning? And that's why I cried. I said, what a fool. Why did I have to know that not to complain? I preached this. Why am I not practicing it? And think about your day, how we complain. Where Allah says, all these things that happen to you, there's a reason. Salawat. And do not say about those who are killed in the way of Allah that they're dead, rather that they're alive. Nobody's dead. Everybody's alive. There's no such thing as fana. As soon as you're created, there's no such thing as non-existence. Everything, nothing could go into non-existence. Even this leaf, if I burn it, it goes into something. You cannot destroy it. Okay. And when we surely test you something, how are we going to test you? Fear, hunger, loss of wealth, lives, fruits. But give good tidings to who? The patient. You're going to lose your mom. I lost my dad. You're going to lose a sibling. You might even lose a spouse. Even in the real world where somebody says, oh, I don't love you anymore. I'm going to leave you. The whole world may leave you. Allah says, are you going to be patient? The whole world is, might be against you. Will you be with me? And that's where you'll be tested. So how do you see your setbacks? How did I see my setback in the morning? Did I see it? Is an obstacle that was in the way? Yes or no? Yeah. So, oh, this is an obstacle. It's in the way. What's wrong? Why would God do this to me? Why would he make it so hard? I've been in four relationships. None of them has worked out. Why is God doing this to me? I, my parents keep fighting. Why would God allow this to happen? Where I, this is all I have to deal with. Don't we always complain like me? I'm probably the biggest complainer in here. So you have two options. You, whenever a setback happens, you look at it as, oh, that's in the way. Or what's the other way? A sign or a blessing. It is the way. There's a great book called Obstacles Are the Way. So whatever setback happens in your life, you say, Allah, this is happening for a reason. It's a setup for something bigger. You lose your job, you lose your business, you lose a child, you lose anything. I do a lot of counseling with people who have grieved over losing a child. Take some time. That grieving process is okay. There's nothing wrong with it in Islam. Depression is a good thing. Anxiety is a good thing. High levels is bad. Low levels is good. But if you can look at every setback in your life as an opportunity, that's how you become successful. Who are the entrepreneurs? The ones that had setback after setback after setback, but their momentum eventually carried. You ever read the Elon Musk story? He had billions of dollars, and then he went, almost went bankrupt. And he had to choose one of his companies, either Tesla or the SpaceX. He says, there were like two kids to me. How could I let one? And he said, out of nowhere. NASA came in and gave him a billion dollar grant that saved both companies. He didn't give up. God was with him. So if God is with him, who's not even a Muslim, you don't think God will be with you?
But how will God be with you is when you're set back, do you give up? As soon as something doesn't go your way, do you complain? How do you behave when setbacks happen in your life? When your mom tells you no, when somebody tells you you can't have something, how do you behave? Do you run to Allah or do you run away and complain? So like how many, like how you may lose interest in things you once enjoyed as a child. For instance, you sometimes need to embrace your inner child to play with your child. And that applies to interactions with other adults too. When children com complete, compete and cry over toys and games, we often simply offer them another one. Let's say you lose a toy. You're playing with a toy. He's playing a toy and he's complaining. How do you soothe him? You give him another what? Toy. So in the same token, how does Allah regard us when we lament over the things that we lose? So when the child, your child loses something, what do you do? You give them something else, yes or no? And what happens to their pain? Doesn't Allah do the same thing for you? But don't we act like children? How do children act when things don't go their way? They whine, they give tantrums. And what do we do as good parents? We what? We comfort them. What do you think Allah does for you? When he sees you crying, he comforts you. Our problem is we really don't believe in that. So we go look for other people to solve our problems. And that's, again, the angels are looking at you. Why? What a weird creature. Allah created you. Why would you go anywhere? He's the one that's going to soothe you. Nobody could help you. And Allah will send you people. So who, when disaster strikes, they say, we are with Allah, we're going back. So what do you say when a bad affliction happens? You say, it's okay, I lost my job, I came from Allah, I'm going back. Allah, you decide. That's one of the powers of this, one of the most powerful verses in the Holy Quran. So confessing you are owned by Allah, if you're not tested, you are not what? If you're not tested and given setbacks, you really don't have divine love within you. If Allah gives you everything you want, that means you're not worthy of being tested. Imagine your teacher in college, she gives everybody an exam, but she gives you the exam, says you can take this exam, but there's no wrong answers. There's only the right answers. You might think, oh, I'll be excited. But then you ask why. She says, oh, you're not worthy of taking the heart exam. How would you feel? You'd feel pretty dumb, right? You're like, really, I'm not worthy? Said, yeah, and you don't even have to circle it. We'll have somebody circle in the answers for you. How would that make you feel? But yet we still cheat. Isn't that weird? You know, most kids in college, Michigan State, Wayne State, U of M Dearborn cheat. They all have the answers. But it's like, but isn't that degrading yourself? I mean, you're paying money to be educated, but yet you cheat. That's the peer pressure. You don't think. What are we doing? Wouldn't you feel insulted? So when you're not tested, it's an insult. So when you do lose your job, when things don't go your way, you're favored by God because God says, watch, I'm going to allow something better to happen. You need to lose something in your life so Allah can replace it with something better. Yes or no? Yeah, that's God's system. So it's okay to lose that best friend. It's okay to lose that boy that your mom doesn't accept. It's okay to lose that job that could be maybe doing haram living. I promise you, because it's not my promise, God's promise, he'll replace it with something better. There's a kid a year ago, he's working at a casino, valet. He says, I'm making 25 bucks an hour. I said, I promise you, if you quit and ask Allah, he'll find you another job. Within a month, I'm broke. Two months. Somebody gave him an idea to go get an IT certification. A year and a half later, he's making $62 an hour. Did he have to lose that job in order to gain that job? Who gave him that job? Allah. Okay. So what, what, do, humans, what do humans can lose their... Okay, what do humans lose their composure over? What's one thing you lose your composure over? Money. Materialistic? Sisterhood or nothing, I agree. By the way, that's why she's still alive, because she doesn't lose her composure. Desires? 
You guys ready? It's a big list because I, I really want to. There's still so much to go over, and I'm really behind. Grief, yes or no? Anger, yes or no? Fear, stress, pain, surprises unexpectedly, like ah. <laughs> <laughs> right and then you can get mad at me lose your composure right you ever see those pranks on instagram and the people want to go and kill him he's like no it's being re there's one guy he sent me the guy pulled out a gun he's gonna shoot him he said no it's a prank it's a prank he says man you're in, you're in compton california Are you crazy doing this stuff here frustration when things don't go your way Think about how frustrated you got today. Think about how frustrated I got. What a fool I am. By the way, uh, embarrassment, jealousy, hunger, anxiety, overwhelm, guilt, sadness, conflict, helplessness, love, big one. When you don't, when you find a relationship, it's an egoic love, it will always, always, always hurt you. There's a sister today that contacted me, said, what do you think about this person? First question I asked her, does he pray? You know why? You know who asked that, though? The prophets and imams. But does he pray? Because if he doesn't think about Allah in bad times, what do you think he's going to do to you in bad times? He's not going to think of you either. That's an egoic love. So one of the criteria is when you're ready to get married, make sure Bare minimum, he prays. Bare minimum. If he doesn't pray, you have to wait. Be careful. Because he'll treat you like a princess. How's he going to treat you in bad times if he's not praying five times a day? You don't know. Why take the risk? And then how's he going to treat your kids? But if you know somebody prays five times a day, he's going to think twice because that's five days he's remembering he's going back to Allah. Isn't that really good advice from our imams? Yes or no? Yeah. Betrayal. Do we lose composure when we hear somebody backbites us? We want to know, go backbite them. Loss. You lose a loved one. Some people become atheists. They stop believing. So why would God take my mom from cancer with cancer or everything else? I don't believe in you, God. We lose our composure in everything. So talk to the person next to you. Exhaustion. You're just physically, mentally. I want you to focus. All I want you to do is pick one and you say for the rest of this week i'm not going to be like brother hussein where he lost his composure for the rest of this week when this one thing hits me i'm going to show patience so everybody pick one and share it with the person next to you i'm all of them <laughs> <laughs> We'll give you 30 more seconds to discuss. I promise we're going to end in a few minutes. Who can I pick on? There you go. So what's the one that you have to work on? Uh, I'd say exhaustion. Number 10. Which one? Exhaustion. 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 Yeah. So when you're supposed to, it's prayer time, or you're supposed to go do some wajib act, what's the excuse shaitan gives you? I'm so tired. I'll do it tomorrow. And you lose patience in your wajib act. But who do you trust is people who treat you well, even though you're not feeling well. They don't dump your day on you. Do you notice we do that to ourselves? So can you overcome that feeling of exhaustion and pray anyway? 
and be nice to your mom and your siblings and your brother anyway? Yes. And when you do that, Allah shows you a different reality. Does that make sense to all of you? Apply the same thing I told him to whatever your thing is, same way. Now, one more thing. We're going to skip. If you could live forever, would you? Jeez. <laughs> okay, good. Allah loves us all. You're all being tried. Who's the person I say the, the guy who doesn't get tried much? But the reason why you wouldn't want to live forever on earth is because you would never do anything. You'd be lazy forever. I'll do it tomorrow because you always have tomorrow. Do you get that? So that's why Allah has blessed you for not living forever on earth. Because what a burden that would be. Plus you wouldn't do anything. So the, how do you know the soul is ready to leave? How do you know a kid is willing to be an adult? He no longer gets excited with what? Toys, material things. Same thing with you. You no longer get excited to talk about mundane things with your friends. Or to do haram things behind your parents' back. None of these things excite you. And then as you get older, unfortunately, Islam, some of us at 15, we're still behaving the same way at 55 years old. Getting angry with the same things, upset with the same things. There's no evolution. You know what that means? When you die, your soul will be ripped out. You might even curse God because he takes these things away from you like a child. That's how your death could be. That on your last moment, you curse God and you mess up your akhirah. Why? Because you're so attached to this world. But how do you know a child becomes a doll? He's no longer attached to the toys and the glitter, right? Is that in the eye in the Quran? Don't be fooled by the glitter of this world. Make sense? Okay. Ah, you're not supposed to see these. What makes a good friend? Quickly, what's one thing that makes a good friend? Huh? I'm sorry? Compassion? Loyalty? Kindness? Yes, you. I'm sorry? Believes in Islam in front of you? Trustworthy? Huh, I'm sorry? Being honest? Wisdom? Honesty? What makes a good friend? Is she a good friend? Why is she a good friend to you? She's kind and what else? She's compassionate. What else? Is she somebody you could take... Can you, so she's somebody you could take your complaints to and not judge you? Is that is that why you could be like spending time with her, right? Because imagine if you go to complaints and she says, get over it. Why are you complaining to me? Is she somebody you could go to even when you're feeling bad, she can make you feel good, right? And vice versa. So that's what makes you guys best friends, right? Okay. Something. Okay. So here we go. One more. Accepting, right? Respectful, God conscious, loving. See, you notice Allah says the fitra, his spirit is within you. You notice nobody said, I like a backstabber. Nobody said, I love somebody who cheats me. You weren't learned these things. These were given to you at birth when God spread his uh, soul in you. Everybody has these qualities. No human being could be raised to like these things. If he does, we put him in a mental hospital. Even liars who lie a lot hate being lied to. So you have to ask your question, why is this fixed in my heart? So since it's fixed, I better like those things and be those things. Unfortunately, the body convinces us, take those things, but you don't have to be it. Be a little bit sneaky. So look, would you like somebody who accepts your prayers? Yes or no? Would you like somebody who grants your request? Every time you call them, they're there. Would you like that as a friend? Would you like somebody who hears your complaints? Yes or no? Would you like somebody who responds to your distress? There was a, a friend of Hajj Hassan. He says, call me whenever you want. He was with a bunch of youth. This was in the early 2000s. He got a flat tire. So he called that guy. He says, I need some help. The guy says, can you call somebody else? I'm kind of tired. He's like, what kind of friend is that? But this, would a good friend will be there for you when you get a flat tire, yes or no? Yes. Merciful to those who weep, when you, cr when you cry to him, he's there for you. What's the worst is when you cry and they look at you, why are you crying? Get over it. Best of those who knows when you're silent, that when you're silent, they still know that you're not feeling good. What are the best spouses? When you're having a bad day, your spouse knows. When you're having a great day, your spouse knows. 
Don't you love those types of people? You don't even have to speak. Doesn't that make a best friend? Doesn't your mom know when you're bad, when you're feeling good and bad, right? Who hears the cries of the week? Most liberal, liberal. Meaning when you ask him for something, you ask him for $5, isn't it amazing you have that friend that will give you 10 That's one thing I like about our Wednesday program. I don't publicize it, and I pray to Allah, bring people who want to know you. And what's a common characteristic of that is this. People in this group are very liberal, meaning they love to give. There's no, you notice there's no bickering. There's nobody looking at each other. Everybody's pretty, isn't it a, feel like a safe place? You know why it feels that way? Where you, It's non-judgmental. You know why it feels that way? Because of you, not because of me. It's the group. That's why I pray to Allah, remove those that are away from you. Only bring, I don't care. And it's the proof, I don't care if it's three people. Ahmed Shrim is here. He was one of the, him and Haji Sabah, it was the main reason why I started. He said, I always speak about books. Why don't you start a book club? And the first day, Ahmed, when we started, was in the classroom. How many people were there the first day? Five people. I said, Allah, it's good. And now it's grown to a community of two WhatsApp groups. He, he's an admin of both groups, over a thousand people. From people all over the world are on YouTube, share, and I get messages every day. So, wow. But you know what I pray for? Allah, take it away if it takes me away from you. I'm not attached to any of this. And I'm a natural introvert. So this stuff doesn't excite me. <laughs> so, what are these things? Anybody know? That's the names of Allah. God has breathed the spirit in you to like these things because it's in his names. If you go find anybody outside of Allah for these things, you will get hurt. That's why you're responsible for your own happiness through Allah. Then when you get married, they're responsible for their own happiness. The worst thing is where you're dependent on somebody else to make you happy. You will get crushed, thus 60% divorce rate. Thus the other 40%, how many of those are happy? Maybe half? Why? Because they forget about this. So that's why Jaushan Kabir, these are the names in Jaushan Kabir. What you should do is the first of the Ramadan, recite it. Middle, end. And there's their narrations of, you do it three times, angels will come and help you, fire won't harm you, and you get sustenance. So if you want a gift from God, it's you recite Joshua and Kabir, first, middle, end. Don't tell anybody. If you're not somebody who prays, not somebody who doesn't maybe practice much in Islam, say, okay, Allah, I'm going to do this one thing from you. Why do I know it works? Because it's a promise from the Prophet. When the Prophet was wearing armor and it was heavy and hot, the angel Jibreel came to him and said, take it off. So how am I going to protect myself in war? And he gave him this dua. It's the shield. And when you recite it, you recite it first. What I do sometimes when I get tired is I'll put it on YouTube because it's in a thousand and one names of God. I'll put it on YouTube and I'll put it on 2X. <laughs> so it speeds up a little bit. Okay. Talk to the person next to you and then we're going to end in a little bit. If you might consider reciting Jaushan Kabir, first, middle, and end of the Ramadan. Go. You can listen to it. Would you recite? Are you going to recite Josh and Kabir during Ramadan? Look, hold me to it. Say, okay, I'm going to prove Brother Hussein wrong. I'm going to recite it. We'll see if anything happens. If anybody's broke, recite it. If anybody's in a toxic relationship, recite it. You know when you're supposed to recite it? Another is on Fridays. This is the best secret weapon you have. And every 10 names of God, there's a special dua for that list. You just take one name, you focus on it. Why? Because all the things that you like, that you were not taught, 
None of these things you were taught, they were all given to you at birth by God. You don't like these things because your mom taught you. You could never be raised by parents, be raised on your own, if you still like these things. That's within your fitra. So if you fulfill your fitra and you become happy, you now won't allow a toxic relationship to come to your life. You won't allow haram money come to your life. And then God will show you opportunities. You know who's proof of it? Me. Before 2006, I thought I was egoic. I had money. I thought I could get everything. I used to drive a Corvette. I used to go and get, you know, I used to be one of the number one Pepsi sellers. I had vending machines everywhere. I sold, we sold more Pepsi and water than anyone, Kroger or anything. Walmart, we sold more. I used to have semi trucks, but I was extremely arrogant. And you know, another thing that I wasn't happy. I was miserable. And it was one lecture. Person looked in the lecture and said, you're a fool if you think you get these things for yourself, that you did it on your own. And you're a fool if you think you could figure life out on your own. And you're a fool thinking if you can be happy without doing it God's way. And that hit me like a lightning bolt. And it changed my life, one lecture. And all I had to do is do it God's way. And God says, here you go. Here's $30, $40 million of projects. What are you going to do with it? I said, oh, we've never done a fundraiser. Allah has given us so much. And tomorrow, we might be tested. Allah may take it all. Well, guess what? Is that okay? Yeah. So I'm not preaching to you because I read it in a book. Because I practice it. And I'm really tired of so many community members losing themselves to this world. Why am I tired? Because they're not going to be happy. I was going to talk about, we'll talk next week, anger. We're going to talk about it next week. And we're going to talk about one last thing. What, can, can I get you guys for two more minutes? Last thing. When you lack anger, what are you? Like, ah! Okay. What did you get? Sorry, Sister Huda, don't, don't, nobody curse me. How did you just feel? Scared. So when you lack anger, what are you? Coward. When are you a coward in Islam? When there's something wajib for you to do and your friends are doing something else, you're scared to tell them, let's not drink tonight. Let's not go out with those boys tonight. Let's not smoke weed tonight. Why? Because you're a coward. You're scared to lose them. And Allah says, you have to lose them for me to give you something better. Why are you scared? Some of you are a coward to go to your parents and tell them your truth, to tell them your secrets. Give your parents a try. They have a right over you. Why are you so scared of them? They love you. They love you more than anybody else. Don't be a coward. Some of you are cowards with relationships, with your spouses. Don't do that. So when you lack anger, what are you? Coward. When you're excessive with your anger, you're reckless. You get so angry, you destroy your life. There's a guy that I helped, the Russian guy, Muslim, who was so angry. I said, there's people who beat up their cars and road rages. He looks at me and said, are you talking about me? I said, I don't know, am I? He said, oh, you haven't rewarded your wife for being patient that she hasn't left your angry behind. I said, how is she safe? She, and he started crying. He looked like a teddy bear. You would never have guessed this when you saw him. He started to cry. I said, okay, text your mom and reward her for being patient. Text your wife, I mean. It took him like five, ten minutes. He was crying. Then he went in his room and cried for three hours. And then he realized he was like this because of his father. Because they, they came from the same village as Khabib. You know, the wrestler, MMA. He said, man, we were treated rough. Three months later, his business tripled and his kids started running towards him. Why? Because of patience. And I, if I ever write a book, it's just going to be a book on people's testimonials. So when you're excessive with your anger, what are you? Reckless. When you're balanced, what are you? Courageous. When Batman goes to save the world from Bane, does he run away and say, I'm scared? No. Is he reckless and do things crazy? Or do we call him courageous? You notice every movie is like that. We're watching a movie of you. Which three are you going to be? So what I want you to do, 
Let's talk to the person next to you. Actually, let's go one step further. Everybody take out their phones. Everybody. Tell the one person that you've been angry towards, thank them for being patient with you and that they haven't left you and that you love them so much. Thank you for being patient with you. If anything, you better text that to your mom. If not, then somebody else, your spouse or somebody. Who's somebody that you should say, thank you for being patient with me? We all have. Some of you got to text your teachers or your bosses that they haven't fired you yet. God, I went away over time today. I promise to be better. Everybody text. Let's go. If I could text somebody right now, it'd probably be my wife, right? I will text her. My boss. I live a crazy lifestyle. My boss is very patient for me. I'm blessed. One person share. Who did you who did you text? Your sister. That even when you're angry with her, she doesn't give you the silent treatment. She's still there for you. Shouldn't you treat your sister better than your friend? Yeah. Right? Shouldn't you treat your mom better than everybody? Yes. That's the rule. Because those siblings have a right over you until you die. Hassan, who did you text? <laughs> who who would like to share? Who'd you text? Your twin brother. They he's they yeah that way even when you annoy him, he's still there for you. Sister Naveen, some began exposure therapy. I'm sorry, I'm gonna be much better next week. I have one more story. Remember about momentum? Whenever you're scared, just do it. Don't contemplate. Some of you are very scared to tell your mom or your wife or somebody a secret. Just do it. Some of you are scared to take that step for Allah, maybe dress better or start reading Quran or praying. You're scared. Just do it. So Sister Naveen, we were doing a session. I said, what are you scared of? Because she goes, I deal with anxiety. I have anxiety over everything. Okay, I said, give me one thing. I'm scared of heights. So good. So I brought this big ladder. She takes one step and her whole body's drenched of sweat. She's sweating profusely and she's shaking. So I got one of the teachers. I said, hold her. She might fall. So I sat with her for about five minutes. All right, take another step. Then take a third step. She's three steps up. She stopped shaking. I said, who's somebody that loves you? She said, my twin brother. I FaceTimed her twin brother. He was just here. I FaceTimed him. He says, is that my sister in a letter? How'd you do that? Then they were talking, and he started to cry. He said, I'm so happy for you. You overcame this. And after the third step, you know what's on the other side of that fear? Freedom. Some of you need to get through that fear so you could be free. And I'm about to cry because I'm thinking about the way he was crying. That's love. The way his bro her brother loves her is true love. The people who love you, please don't betray that. Ever. How? By obeying Allah. There's so much more I wanted to go over. I'm gonna, we're going to do some cool things next week. I promise you by next week, we're going to end right at 9, 9.05. I promise you. I'm, I'm going to keep my word. Who would like to share? Who would like to present next week? A few minutes on the Holy Quran. I need one person. Are you going to do it? Okay. Salawat. Just text me the ayah so I have it up. The book we're going to read, we're going to talk about this. This is the book. Myth of Normal. 
We're going to read. I'll put it on the chat. This is the description. It basically says the health system is a big hoax. And he proves it scientifically. It's one of the best books. So I'm going to put it in the group chat on the website, Myth of Normal. Last thing, uh, we have a retreat coming up. It's at Camp Ta. It's an adult retreat. That's July 25th, 28th. I'm going to come back to that. But if you would like to join the WhatsApp group, so it costs us about $250 a night every Wednesday between the food, cleaning lady, and everything else. Because we feed, we try to feed everybody with drinks. If you would like to sponsor, please go ahead and you can click on this and please help us support us. Because every week it costs us between two to $300 to run this program. So please support it if you could. That's the WhatsApp group. Any questions? Okay, before you go, anybody get a reply? Who could like to share a reply? All right, go ahead. Who did you have to be patient towards? Your husband. And what did your okay, what did you tell your husband and what did your husband reply? Thank you for being patient with me. And what did he reply? What did you do? No. Are you okay? <laughs> Do you notice? Okay, I'm not going to pick on you, but I know you have tough skin. Do you notice, and this is all of you, including me, was her husband surprised with that text message? Yes or no? So you notice for her to be grateful, it was a surprise to her husband. What if in a year from now, that kind of text is expected? How would a relationship grow with Allah? Tremendously. Like some of you, it's a surprise. Like here, these two brothers. If your house was spotless and you did the laundry, you did your room, you took care of your baby, the brother, right? Or daughter, sister, your baby sister, right? And you changed her diaper. You took care of the whole house and you were nice to your older sister. And then your parents came in. What would they say? What do you want? Would they be surprised? What did you do wrong? Would they be surprised? Yes, that's my point. For them to be great right now in your life, it's a surprise. Imagine a year from now, your parents come in and their friend is with them. Who did everything? Oh, my two sons. What planet are they from? Oh, it's expected. That's your relationship with Allah. Get it to a point where Allah expects you to be great with the sharia, with the things, and watch how Allah returns the favor. Share two takeaways from tonight's lecture with the person next to you. Go. Two takeaways. You're going to take away. Josh and Kabir, you're going to become great. Two takeaways. It's 927. We'll be back in here. We're going to be doing getting over your anger meditation, getting over low desire meditation. We'll be back in here at 10 o'clock. Thank you guys. Salah ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Sorry about the time. I promise next week I'll be better.